Feed my old friend. Yes. Why don't we go shopping? Yes, let's. Let's go. Good idea. That day began just like any other of our weekly silent shopping trips. Suddenly, a shopkeeper appeared. As always, it was full of fun and laughter. Good morning, madam. May I help you? Indeed you can. But how could we realise what was actually going to happen to us on that faithful, strange and frightening day? <laughs> All right, hands up. This is a stick up. Nobody do. You lot, over there, out of the way. Give us all your lollies. And the rest of the two. Hey, you! Don't you know that Robin is off as against the Majesty's law? No. no. Well, it is. So come on out. We've got you surrounded. Go, oh, blimey. Flip it up. It's the law. We've been sussed. Let's get us an ostrich. I wonder if they mean a hostage. Yeah, and why? Here. Hold this. Thank you. Right, let's get her out of here. The thieves led us away. Only the police could save us now. Don't move, I've got you surrounded. Let us go. We've got ostriches. <laughs> yes, that's right. A tense standoff followed. And then suddenly, an innocent German tourist became embroiled in our tragedy. Let us in the car, Mrs. Oh, you're dead. Couldn't you mir den Weg nach Berlin beschreiben? Ah, you what? The evil criminals bundled myself and Professor Speed into the car, somehow leaving Dr. Time behind. Perhaps because he was so small oh, and you. weak. No, to him. Our future was looking increasingly bleak. What would become of us? What did fate have in store? What force on earth could help us now? Flipping it! I mean, flipping it! Now they've escaped! What a pretty pickle we're in now! Don't worry, Ossifer. We can apprehend them using the appliance of science. Really? But how? Via speed time graphs. Show me. Professor Time then used his scientific genius to produce a velocity time graph for Mr. Policeman. A velocity time graph? Yes, yeah, strange man. Velocity is the posh word for speed. It's the speed of an object in a given direction. Oh, fixing it. Professor Time explained to Mr. Policeman that section A to B of the velocity time graph shows us that the object is accelerating. Accelerating? Speeding up. We can calculate the value of the acceleration by finding the gradient of the velocity time graph. The gradient? Yes, the steepness of the slope of the graph. Do you mind? I'm trying to make a TV program. Who are you, by the way? Is this a gent? No, next door along. Sorry, I'll be off then. Remember, acceleration equals change in velocity divided by the time. Look, just get out, will you? Gah. In section A to B, the German car speed increases from 0 to 20 meters per second in 5 seconds. This means the change in speed is 20, it's taken 5 seconds, so 20 divided by 5. Uh, that gives us the car is accelerating at 4 meters per second squared. 
The horizontal line between B and C shows that the car then travels at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second for the next 35 seconds before, yes, it accelerates again. This time the speed increases from 20 meters per second to 30 meters per second. It takes 10 seconds this time for that change in speed to occur. So, change of speed is 10, we divide that by 10, which gives us an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared. Then what happens? Rah! What are you still doing here? Don't tell me, it's a flat line again. That means he's going at a constant velocity. Uh, yeah, if you look at the graph, this time he's going at 30 meters per second. Meters per second, yeah, yeah, alright. Very good, very good. Yeah. You sure this isn't the gents? What? No, look, it's it's a TV studio. Go on, out, out, shoot, 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 shoot. Now, are they? No, no, I need to get sure he is out. Finally, Professor Time explained how the last section showed that the car was decelerating. It slows down this time from 30 meters per second to zero meters per second in just 10 seconds. This is a deceleration of minus three meters per second squared. The minus sign shows that the object is decelerating. Well, this is all very interesting, but how could this save Professor Time's colleagues from the, the evil criminals? So that's how we, how we can cal cal calculate the car's acceleration. But how can that help us? It can't. Speed time graphs also can supply other useful information. Oh, bye, Eke. Somebody save me from this. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Time showed the policeman how he could also use the velocity time graph to calculate the distance the object had travelled. You can find it by calculating the area underneath the graph. Unfortunately, I can't be bothered to tell you about this, so go and ask your teacher. After all, that's what they get paid for. Long holidays, etc. Mumble, grumble, grumble. Uh... So therefore, if my calculations are correct, I predict, assuming the car's present speed and acceleration, it should be about... here. Out here. Well done, Professor. You've saved the day again. So remember, velocity time graphs can show us immediately if an object is speeding up or accelerating. It can also show us if it's going at a constant velocity or speed. It can also show us when an object is slowing down or decelerating. We can actually use the gradients of the graph to calculate the actual acceleration. Brilliant, Arnie. But who was that masked man? A crazed and drug-dependent geography teacher. It's a fair cop, Ossifer. We did the black. They kept talking about physics. It was horrible. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> good uh, common sense and good old-fashioned values have won again. Physics for that. Physics? Physics? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah.